So today we're going to be taking a look at JIMP. JIMP stands for JavaScript Image Manipulation Program. If you have been on my channel for a while, you've known that I've done two other videos on this, but the audio was a bit messed up. So essentially I'm just re-recording those two videos in this video plus some extra stuff. But if you don't want to see all of stuff which I've already shown you, then I will provide a jump cut here or down in the description. So the first thing I want to talk about is how does JIMP actually work? The first thing you want to do is install it from NPM and it is called JIMP just on NPM. You can just click here and there you go. And after that, you can import it just like any other dependency. In here, we're going to have instantly instantiated function. And the reason why we want to have that is because we're working with asynchronous and await. Then the first thing we want to do is to actually load an image. We do that by doing jimp.read, then providing either a URL, so a website URL, or the file system location for the image. Then we can do image.write, which will write it synchronously, or we can do image.write asynchronously, and that will write the image asynchronously. So the first thing I want to take a look at is how to add text to your image. So we're going to be adding hello world. So the first thing we're going to be doing is that we're going to be loading the font. So we do that by doing jimp.load font and then we provide a constant here. So jimp provides a few different constants for fonts and you can see them down here. You can see the name for it and then you can see what it will actually the font name over here. Now these are bitmap fonts. You could convert a normal font file into a bitmap font and then use that instead. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing you with the built-in fonts. The next thing we want to do is to actually add the text to the image. And we do that by using the function print. Then the font X and the Y. So that will draw the text up here. So from 0, 0, X and Y. And then we're going to be writing hello world. And if you want to take a look at some more information about the font and using custom bitmap fonts, you can check this GitHub out. But if we run this, You can see that this will generate an edited image. And if we open that, you can see that we get hello world and image, which is our base image, is not going to obviously have any text. The next thing I want to take a look at is resizing the image. You can also do image.resize. Then you can pick a height and a width. Let's take a look at that. And you can see that the image is now smaller. So this is the original size and this is the edited image. So the next thing is if you want to keep the aspect ratio, you can actually provide this function, so jimp.auto. So it's a constant that will tell jimp to keep the aspect ratio. So you can see here, this would resize the height to 255 and then it would scale the width accordingly. And this down here would do the reverse. So the next thing I want to take a look at is pixelating an image. So the way you do that is you run the function pixelate with a integer and that will be how much to pixelate the image. So if you just give it one number and run it, then you can see it pixelates the entire image. But let's say you only want to pixelate an area. Then we can actually provide both the amount of pixelation and then the X and the Y and the width and the height. And you can see that if we run this here, it's only pixelated this area up here and not the rest of the image. So if you want to blur a face or something like that, then this could be really good. The next thing I want to take a quick look at is just cloning an image. It's going to take this image and then clone it to here. The reason why you want to do this and not just load the image two times is that it uses a bit more resources on asking the file system to get the image loaded and then get it into GIMP, then it's easier to just make a copy of it. Or in some cases, you might want it for an effect where you need to take the image and modify it two different ways and then combine it. The next thing I want to take a look at is both Gaussian Blur and Blur. So you can see if we run this, it blurs the image. And if we run Blur instead of Gaussian Blur, you can see that also blurs the image. The next thing I want to take a look at is inverting the image. So this is the same effect like any cheap photo editing software. You can just invert the image. You see it inverts the pixels. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is brightness. So you can actually set the brightness. So you see here we're setting the brightness to 0 0.5 and this goes in between negative 1 to positive 1. And if we run this, you can see that that brightens the image. Now, I've been talking about a lot of different functions and where did I first of all get all of these functions and where did I get all the parameters for these functions? So that's the next thing I want to take a look at. So if you hit on NPM here, search for Jimp, they've provided the documentation. They have also provided it on their GitHub. So if we scroll down, you can see that all of the functions is here. You can see the name and you can see the parameters and you can even see over here what they do. 
And that is the way I've been getting all of this information here. Now there's a few effects which are not on here and that's what I'm going to be talking about later. And I will show you how to get that information because not all of them are covered here. So all of the built-in ones I'm pretty sure are covered but there's a few of the plugin ones which are just not covered anywhere. But we'll get to that later. So the next thing here is grayscale and that just converts the image into a grayscale. You can see it's grayscale. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is color manipulation. These were a little like Photoshop. So you can see that we have all these different effects here. You can see sort of the structure here. And you can also see the explanation over here on what they do. But let's try running this and then we can see what it does. So you can see if we open the edited image, you can see that the hue is now changed. So the way this color function here works is that you provide an array of objects where there's a ply and a parameter. This here is the name of the effect and the effect we want to change is the hue. And then we have the parameters, which in this case will be 100. So if we change this here to, let's say, to 200 and try running it, you can see that that changed the hue. So if we just add another effect here, we can add a lightened effect. So this will lighten the image. So, and this goes from zero to 100. And now you can see both the hue is changed and the image is brighter. Now, the next thing I want to take a look at is manual image manipulation. So before it was automatic, you just pick an effect and then provided some properties. But GIMP actually also supports manual image manipulation. So that means they will get each pixel and you will decide what to do with it. So the way this works is that you have the scan method here where you provide X and Y. So that will be the starting coordinates. So we'll start from zero, zero. So that will be up here. And then this is the image bitmap dot width and image bitmap dot height. So essentially what this is, is just the width and the height of the image. This will grab an area from up here to down here. So that will mean in this case, the entire image. And then you provide a function which will get the X and the Y and this here, which is the image data. And the, from there we can extract red, green, blue, and alpha channel. And then down here we can modify it. So here I'm just saying if X is less than Y, then I will set the red to 255. And we can see what that would look like. We run it here. You can see that that just draws a line. And if we reverse this effect here, you can see that it would be the reverse. Okay, so the next couple of things we're gonna be taking a look at is effects. So I'm gonna be showing you a few effects. I'm not gonna be explaining in details what they do, but you can see these effects and then you can play around with the values yourself. So the first here is a ghost effect. And if we run this, you can see that it gets like a ghosting effect. So the next effect here is an emboss effect. So if we run this, you can see that it looks like this. I believe this is used for edge detection, but I'm not completely sure on that. So we have been talking a lot about loading images. So we, we don't have to load a base image. We can actually tell Jim to just generate a new image. So this here will generate an image that's 256 by 256, where every pixel is set to red. So the way we set the color here is the first one here we can just ignore. Then this is the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, and this is the alpha. So if we run this here, you can see that we get a red image. So the last thing I want to talk about is plugins. So there's a few plugins for GIMP. So you can see if we go on here and we search on npm at GIMP, you can see we'll get a few of plugins here. So the ones that are plugins are the ones that are named plugin dash and then a name. Now you can already see we have taken a look at a few of these. So the majority of these plugins are built into GIMP, but there's a few ones that are not. So this threshold here is not built in. So the circle effect is not built in either. So the way you add these functions is that first you wanna find them on NPM, then you wanna install them like any other package. And then you can see that it shows this code down here, which is explains how to use it. But by just installing this package, you won't actually get it into your GIMP installation. And I've been trying to search for hours on how to actually get this code working in GIMP. So I can't really find any like loader or anything. So after a few hours of digging around, I decided to just write my own loader. <laughs> so I'm not gonna go in details on how this loader works, but you essentially 
provide the image. So that's the image you want to manipulate. And this image here, only this image will get the extra features. Then you provide the text name. So that is the name after the dash. So the last thing here, that's what you want to provide in there. And this will actually go ahead and load those two plugins on the image object. And the way I developed this function here is right here. And I'm not going to go in detail on how it works. After you have done that, you will get the effects of the plugins that you have installed. So let me take a look at two of them. So the first one here is the fish eye effect. And if we run this, you can see that this runs a fish eye function. The next one I want to take a look at is the circle one. So if we just uncomment the fish eye effect. Now you can do multiple if you didn't get that. You can do multiple effects, but we'll just do circle and then the radius. So that's the radius of the circle and then the X and the Y. And the way this looks is you can see that it draws a circle with a radius of 200 at 200, 200. Now let's try to combine the manual image manipulation effect with this effect here to see how that would look. So let me just clean up my code here a little. So we'll just add it right there. Uncommon it. And let's try running it. And there you go. That is an extremely custom effect for your image. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button. If you want to see more of my videos, I have included two videos right here. And hopefully I see you in the next one.